How are you? Nice to meet you. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Rebecca. Nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. Let's see. Okay, it looks like we're about on time, only a couple minutes late, and I've gotten an opportunity to say hello to everyone, but I know you perhaps have not gotten an opportunity to get to network amongst yourselves, and so I'll make a couple short comments, and then if we could perhaps go around the table, introduce yourself, and then if you could tell me and the secretary what context you are offering your comments today in. So if you are a business owner, let us know you're a business owner, and maybe what business, how many employees, or if you're a parent, We'd like to know that. If you are a veteran, um, that would be you know, pretty obvious for some of us. <laughs> N not so much for, for others. You don't, um, despite Mr. Klett's tie, you do not have to reveal your NFL team affiliation this morning. <laughs> that, may, that, may, that may provoke some in, in the group, especially after yesterday. Finally, good game, good score. <laughs> so thank you all very much for being here. This is an exciting day for our administration because, as you know, we have worked very hard to have a pretty multifaceted portfolio when it comes to moving our state forward. In this last budget, you all know that the governor had five big priorities. Obviously, we wanted to continue up the path of economic development, and so jobs was a huge priority for us. One of the ways we facilitate movement up that path is by investing in infrastructure, and so that was another big budget priority for us. Workforce development, worker training, huge, important commitment. We have made $100 million in this budget because Governor Walker felt that was so important for the future of Wisconsin's globally competitive workforce. And obviously, that global competitiveness starts at education, which was another priority for us. That's one of the commitments that we are making, not only in this budget that he just signed a few months ago, but also throughout the term. And then finally, reform governance. We want to continue to move forward with government accountability and reforming what we do in Madison underneath the big white dome because we know that the taxpayers will keep us accountable and we want you to. And that brings us to today. We want to make sure that our tax climate in Wisconsin is not only the best in the upper Midwest, but the best from coast to coast. We're not there yet. We know, and Secretary Chandler will tell you in his exciting PowerPoint, that Wisconsin is not where she needs to be in order to be competitive when it comes to economic development and in order to become competitive when it comes to making sure people feel comfortable with their bottom lines, with their budgets, both your corporate, your business budget, and also what you do at home. It's Christmas time, obviously people are looking at their bottom lines because we're getting ready to pay property taxes, but not only that, people are determining what their end of year giving looks like. They're also determining what they have left over perhaps to buy a gift or two to someone who means a lot to them. And so this is the perfect time to have our first ever tax reform round table. So this is the first one, the premier, and we're really happy that you all could join us this morning because we want to continue to expand our portfolio in Wisconsin, and we want you to be an incredibly huge part of that. We want to find out today what you hate about Wisconsin's tax system. Um, what, I would like to say what you love about paying taxes in that, yeah, but I knew that would end up being a, a joke. Um, but wh where we can improve the most. And Secretary Chandler is going to run down the things that are going to be highlights for you and perhaps making your comments today. So we're going to go around the table if we can introduce ourselves and then tell us the context in which you're going to be making comments here today. And then Secretary Chandler is going to give you some context for this conversation on tax reform because the governor is very committed to driving the tax burden lower and lower and lower in Wisconsin. We know that is proven to drive economic development, create more jobs, and that's what we want to do here in this state. So thanks for being here. Mr. Secretary? Rick Chandler, Secretary of the Wisconsin Department of Revenue. 
Glad to be here. Thanks to Beloit College for hosting, and the campus looks great. Already? It's your turn. <laughs> My name's Jim Foster. Uh, I'm retired. Uh, I have uh, 50 years in the meat industry. Uh, also a veteran. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Taxpayer. So I guess I'm uh, <laughs> That qualifies you to be here, Jim. Concerned just a little bit. <laughs> All right. That's, uh, that's my basic introduction. Thanks, Jim. I'm Sandra Bennett. I'm from Data Dimensions here in Gainesville. And we obviously have an invested interest in the tax um, reform that's going on. Um, we're a growing business. And we recently um, have expanded, and we're probably going to have to expand again due to growth. Um, and we'd like to do that here in Wisconsin instead of another state, and I'm here to gather some notes for my boss, who will be able to be here, and I believe Kevin Liz is going to share some of Mark's thoughts for us. Sandra, thanks for choosing Wisconsin, and thanks for drawing. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Kathy Winford. I'm a marketing consultant for CSI Media, um, which is the Janesville Messenger, State Line News, Walworth County, Shopping Advertising. And I work with hundreds of small businesses. So when I go in to talk about marketing and advertising, I get a lot of comments and a lot of the um, the obstacles that are being small business owners ways to try and develop their business. So I thought maybe I could listen in and see if there was something that might be helpful. Last few years, I imagine, have been interesting for your industry. Very hard, yeah. <laughs> um, but really hard on the small business owners. You know, they, they don't have a lot of room to play with. That's true. And if they want the inventory, they have to have the inventory in their stores. Um, they develop customer bases. But when, whatever happens with the economy directly affects them in a way. Indeed. Kathy, thank you for being here. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Bill Flanagan, um, representing the Lloyd College and President Bierman, who could not be here today. He's in Chicago. And for those of you who are thinking of a place to target your philanthropic activities, <laughs> at <the> university, <laughs> I'd like to suggest Lloyd College. Very subtle, Bill. Yes, Thank you. Is it back to that? I also <laughs> uh, John Clatt, <laughs> the Tricorn Insurance. Uh, in addition to working in the business community, I'm very involved in the executive committee of the Greater Political Economic Development, where we try to recruit businesses to this community. Tax policy is huge to us when we try to bring businesses to Wisconsin. It's more important to have a good long-term strategy versus tax incentives initially, so we'd like to see something in that respect. Also, uh, I pay way really too much in taxes, Rebecca, so if you can kind of get that on appreciated. Other than that, go we'll bears. That's why I'm <laughs> taking notes here. I'm Wayne Hanna, I'm the CEO of uh, Cata Transmission uh, here in Beloit. Uh, we have grown uh, quite a bit in the last year and a half or so. Uh, we expect to continue to do that um, because our investors are not located in the state. Um, they have the pleasure of paying both Wisconsin tax and Illinois tax. Um, and our interest really is, is that as well as We've made over a million dollars in capital expenditures this year. We expect to do about the same next year. And I would love to see the, either the 179 provisions or the bonus depreciation provisions be moved along so that they match the federal uh, tax policy. Very good, thank you. Not me. James Everson, Rock County Planning Development. I work with a lot of folks in the room here, and certainly on any given day we're working with new startups, existing companies that are looking to grow, as well as new investment coming into the area. So certainly the Secretary is no stranger to these comments. Uh, we certainly are, are key to the bottom line, and more importantly, looking at both the short and long-term implications of policies that may up the capital. And there's been some good strides and movements in regards to that. Certainly there's more room to grow and to go on that. And, um, we could consume easily two hours here with short commentary, but there's a lot of people in the room, so I'll certainly follow up with specifics after the fact. Thank you. I'm Corey Starman, uh, the lead tax partner for McLaughlin that heads up our Wisconsin tax practice. Uh, we've got offices in Janesville, Madison, and Milwaukee. So I represent clients that have $5 million in revenue up to 
maybe a little over a billion in revenue. Uh, the good thing is bonus depreciation on 179 from Wisconsin will couple with the federal government next year. But the uh, bad thing is the limits from that uh, 25,000. Actually, there's no bonus depreciation yet. But, so our, my, my perspective is really coming from my clients. Uh, and from what we see from an income tax as well as sales interest and some other credits that are out there. That's great. Thank you. Frank Fusco, I'm the Risk Management Director for Blackhawk Transport and Logistics here in Beloit. Uh, I'm here representing the uh, President Mike Conway. Uh, we have about, we're a dedicated trucking company, have 23 accounts scattered throughout the country and about 250 employees with that. So today I'm here kind of looking out for their interests and in representing the company. Thanks, Frank. Tony Carroll Sr., welcome to Beloit. Thank beautiful, you. Beautiful Beloit and great Brock County. I'm a 49 year business person at Brock County, 47 years full time, and uh, two years as far as military. But, uh, and uh, i very proud of everything that's being done in the state and certainly in the county and the city here. And, uh, just here to learn and certainly uh, uh, be supportive. And uh, thank you for coming down and spending the time with us. Pleasure. Two us, thank you both for being here. I'm here on behalf of Hendricks Holding with the title of Director of Community Development. So I have an emphasis on workforce development, education, economic development, what have you, for the development of this area. Okay. Um, Scott being King of the Tax Rate of Agency Supply and Energy. Income tax process for ABC, Fair Solar Company, and Dan Hendricks. And uh, we file between all those companies hundreds of tax returns in pretty much every state of the country has income tax. And trying to think of something positive to say, I'll tell you, it's kind of the Department of Revenue compared to the other states, <coughs> which we receive notices on a weekly basis. It's actually much better. <laughs> Seriously. If I were to compare WDR to the rest of the states and some of the things these other states do and don't do, I'm not talking about just getting out of here. Uh, they're a lot better. They really are. Way to start off the meeting now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll never be out of it again. <laughs> Good afternoon. Hi, Mike Mistrup from Pure Ingredients and Flavors. Uh, I'm the U.S. tax manager, so we have various compliance filings across the U.S. Uh, I specifically focus on m and activity and incentive work throughout our properties. And obviously we have a lot of R&D going on as well. Excellent. Good afternoon. My name is Mara Yaki. I'm a little small accounting practice here in the Blades. Um, and I'm here not only representing my own small business, but the three or four clients that that's very helpful. Thanks, Mark. I'm Sherry Stump. I'm the CEO of Black Rock Community Credit Union in Janesville, uh, representing about 40,000 members in this area. And uh, we also serve on WIDIC as a representative working in the financial industry, uh, helping with jobs development. Thank you. I'm Jeff Horn with Black Rock Community Credit Union. I'm also a resident of Delaware. So Good stuff in that water. Interesting. Thanks, Jeff. I'm Dick Gerhardt, local CPA. Way back when I was with Price Waterhouses, now Price Waterhouse Coopers in Chicago and Milwaukee Bowls, and I'm a Korean War veteran. Uh, had my own practice since 1967. And I primarily uh, deal with the small business and individuals and some farm owners, but primarily individuals. Thanks for your service, Dan. Hi there. Hi. Uh, I'm Larry Bergen. I'm the Director of Call Reporting and Community Health for the Boy Health System. And I wear a second hat today as Chair of, uh, this year's Chair of the Great Boy Chamber of Commerce. And as you know, the uh, the health system is the largest employer in uh, Beloit, and obviously it depends upon its customers and um, contracting, etc. On a personal note, I very much so want to thank you. This is the third time in the 2013 that Lieutenant Governor Clifford has come here 
to uh, the employee community to talk to various aspects of the business community here at Student Resources. Appreciate it. Well, thanks, Larry. Glad to be here. Good afternoon. She and her parents and an agent for the American Family in town, business owner, small business, one in college, and another one just in college. So, I'll tell you a couple of different things. Interesting. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you very much. My name is Aya Andaj. I'm the CEO and co founder of a small writing company in Google Sciences. I'm from Medicine, and we are here uh, representing the also an Ambara Harvard member, board member, representing the technology based investments and businesses. <coughs> Our business is technology oriented. We grow um, the engineering tissues for screening of drugs for enabling personalized medicine, lowering the cost of the drugs development rare diseases, and also the development of drugs in cancer and the cardiac area can protect the nation interest technology. So this kind of technology brings jobs, additional jobs, rapidly grows, highly competitive globally. So keeping in Wisconsin required the tax, uh, tax system and incentives for both incentives to the investors and to growing the business for the long run is very conducive in Wisconsin, and I am also a friend of two from the voice of the left side of the family. I know how that goes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for growing here in Wisconsin. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Larry Ettinger. I'm with Hendricks Commercial Properties, and we're an owner and developer of all sorts of type of retail, of retail office, industrial, and residential properties. Uh, we're in the process of either developing or redeveloping several properties, not only in Rock County, but in the state of Wisconsin, whereby we are very, very active in trying to bring new businesses into the state and into the county for our developments. Thanks for the help, Larry. Back to you. Good afternoon. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. I'm new to Wisconsin. Welcome. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. I'm with this Lloyd. Our primary focus is on bringing tourists. Um, to our community, but in a community this size, it's also about quality and life and well-being. So one of the projects I'm working on this year is a relocation package for the businesses to use for a state line community. We, we appreciate the businesses that are here, but in Beloit, we're looking to also make sure their employees live here in the state of Wisconsin. So that is one of my priorities for this year. Please tell them. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I hear Monica? Crystal. Thank you. And Monica, I understand exactly what you're talking about because I used to be a news anchor in Rockford, oh, Illinois. Yes, and we called the whole area the state line area. But now that I'm the lieutenant governor of Wisconsin, I have very little interest in, in growing the economy of Rockford as opposed to that of Beloit. So thank you all very much for coming. I think we're going to have an interesting conversation, good dialogue on how we move forward. Is there anyone over here who, who might want to introduce themselves? And then Waylon, if you want to introduce yourself as well, just so folks know who everyone is. Hi, my name is Paul Heine. Total chair of Angus Morrison. Here in the way, we have approximately 400 employees, most based in the way. We invest approximately $10 million in the year. Excellent. Thank you. Jeff? Yeah. I'm Jack from Los Angeles, Deputy Secretary of the Department of Revenue. John? Uh, Jeff Aston, I'm Chief Catalyst and Director of Research at Wisconsin Bureau. I'm Waylon Cooper, I'm policy director to the governor. Here at Derby, looking forward to hearing from all of you Well, that should show you how important this project is to the governor. He is very committed to continuing to drive taxes lower in the state of Wisconsin. But already, we have done quite a bit of that. And that is why Secretary Rick Chandler is honoring us today to give us a PowerPoint and some perspective on what has happened over the last couple of years and where we're projected to go next upon your direction. Because like we said, we are trying to gather as many opinions as possible in order to determine what that direction looks like and how we can continue to move forward and raise more jobs in this economy. With that, I'm going to turn it over to my friend, Secretary Chandler. Well, thanks very much. Uh, again, it's, it's good to be here. Um, 
And uh, I just thought I'd run through a few slides talking about some of the things we've done to date to improve Wisconsin's tax system, and then provide a little bit of background information about uh, our tax system to help uh, provide some background for the discussion. Job creation, obviously, is the top goal for Governor Walker, and tax reform is a key element of that. I always emphasize that we know there's lots of other things that affect the state's business climate, workforce, education, infrastructure, and so forth. We're working in all of those areas, but taxes is one key area where we're working to improve. Our tax climate has become a lot more competitive in the past three years. We've historically had an above average tax burden, but we're bringing it down. And the purpose of this discussion is just to solicit as many ideas as possible about things we can do to help our tax climate and help improve our job creation climate for the future. In the last three years, the 2011 and 2013 legislative sessions, we have implemented a major income tax reform initiative, as well as implemented some new business tax incentives. The income tax reform initiative has focused on middle class rate reductions as well as increased deductions for things like health savings accounts, which we know are very important to lots of small businesses and self-employed individuals, and increased deductions for health insurance premiums that people who are employed pay, increased deductions for child care, private school tuition as well. In addition, we've been working to simplify our tax system. There are more than 70 instances where we've made our tax code consistent with the federal code including, as was mentioned, the bonus depreciation in the Section 179 provisions because we want it to be as consistent and as simple as possible. We've also done a lot of things with business tax incentives. Um, we've had a lot of long-standing business tax incentives in the state, the uh, property tax exemption for manufacturing machinery equipment, uh, research uh, and development deduction, angel investment credits to encourage investments in new businesses, We've tried to build on those, and I won't go into the list of all the things we've done, but two of the major ones are a new manufacturing and agriculture tax credit, which, when it's fully implemented in 2016, will provide a tax credit of 7.5% against the taxes that are imposed on income derived from manufacturing and agriculture activities here. That will offset most or all of the taxes on those activities in the state of Wisconsin. The theory there is that Wisconsin is uh, one of the two most manufacturing intensive states in the country, a major agricultural state. We have a competitive advantage in those areas. We want to build on it. We want to make our tax button one of the best time for manufacturing and businesses. And that's what this credit does. When those businesses thrive, there's a tremendous multiplier effect, and all other areas of the economy thrive as well. In addition, we implemented a package of investment incentives. The most important one is one that says if you invest in Wisconsin-based business, keep your money there for at least five years, starting in 2011. At the time that you sell that investment, there will be no capital gains tax on it. Uh, it builds on our angel investment <coughs> credit, which, again, is it meant to encourage investment in new businesses that we want to encourage to be formed and grow here in Wisconsin and uh, makes us a leader among all the states in that area. The total tax reduction in the last two years is $1.4 billion, $400 million in the 2011 legislative session, and another almost billion dollars in the budget bill that was passed in June of this year. A few more words about the income tax reform initiative. The most significant part of that was rate reductions. We reduced rates for all tax brackets, but the largest reductions were for middle class taxpayers because when we analyzed the tax code, we saw that's where we were most out of line compared with other states. But we provided relief across the board, relief at all income levels. And as I mentioned, we increased the number of deductions as well. You can see here, we used to have five income tax rates. We compressed those down to four and reduced the rates for all of the brackets. The uh, distribution of the reductions uh, was targeted to the middle class. You can see that in dollar terms, also in percentage terms, the biggest reductions were for middle class taxpayers between monthly thirty and $100,000 of income. We've also been working to hold the line on property taxes. Uh, on this chart, you can see the red line going up is the trend of increases in property taxes for a typical home in the state. Uh, that we were seeing when we took office. 
the governor and the legislature worked to put uh, additional controls on spending and taxing uh, across the state at the local level. And as a result, taxes on a median value of home dropped in 2011 2012. Will drop again uh, this month when the 2013 property tax bills are, are uh, sent out. So, taxes for the typical homeowner, homeowner have gone down. Each of the years Governor Walker has been in office compared to the 27% increase in the prior decade. And next year, taxes are uh, projected to be lower for the typical homeowner, homeowner than when Governor Walker took office. So those are the things we've been doing to improve our tax climate. Just a little bit of background information on Wisconsin's tax system. If you look at state and local taxes taken together, this, uh, this chart indicates where our money comes from. Property taxes are the biggest source of state and local revenue, primarily collected at the local level, about 40% of the total. Income taxes are next, collected at the state level, about 28% of the total. Sales taxes, primarily collected at the state level, to some extent at the local level, about 18%. Then motor vehicle taxes, corporate income taxes, and other taxes, such as unemployment compensation, cigarette taxes, and so forth. In total, as you can see, roughly $26 billion in tax collections at the state and local level. If you look at it just from a state perspective, this shows where the taxes come from to support the state's general fund budget, which I think is what a lot of people think of when they think of taxes. They think of property taxes at the local level and general fund taxes at the state level. Um, at the state level, of our general fund taxes, roughly half comes from the individual income tax, roughly one third from the sales tax, about 6% from the corporate income tax, and after that, cigarette taxes and a variety of other smaller taxes. And a final piece of information here, this chart shows where we rank compared with other states in terms of our various tax sources. And I should emphasize that these are figures for 2011. They come from the Census Bureau. These are the most recent figures available at the national level because it takes a while to compile information from all 50 states. But you can see on the top line, uh, for total tax collections, we're the 10th highest state in the country about 9% above the national average. Now, if you look at that in historical terms, the trend has actually been favorable over the last 25 years or so. In the mid-1980s, we were third in the country in terms of taxes. There have been some tax reductions in the 80s and 90s, and then under the Walker administration that have helped drop our tax rate. So we're coming down, but clearly we're still above average. Property taxes were number 10, about 26% above average. Individual income taxes, 12 to about 28% above average. Sales taxes were actually 35th, 16% below the national average. Corporate income taxes, 18th, almost exactly at the national average in terms of dollar amount. Fees and charges, it's, it's helpful to look at fees in addition to taxes. Fees and charges were slightly below average, we rank 30th, 3% below the national average. So if you look at all of our revenue sources, taxes and fees taken together, and this is state and local, we rank 14th, about 6% above the national average. But I think a lot of people look at uh, the property taxes they pay, look at the individual income taxes they pay, notice that we're above average, and would like to see further progress. So we want to make further progress, we want to get more competitive, it's important from a policy point of view and also sort of from a marketing point of view. We don't want to stick out like a sore thumb in any given area because that's a factor that works against us when people are making location decisions. A little bit more information about specific tax sources. And here, one of the things I've done is provide some information about where we rank among the states overall, but also where we rank in the Midwest overall, so you see Wisconsin's rank for the individual income tax uh, is third among 12 states in the Midwest. This is sort of a Census Bureau definition of the Midwest. The North Central states, really from Ohio over to the Dakotas, down to Missouri. Um, so we're 12th among the 50 states for the individual income tax, third uh, out of the Midwestern states, and second among the states that border that includes Michigan, uh, Illinois, Iowa, and Minnesota. 
43 states have an individual income tax. There's a few big states that don't. Florida, Texas, Washington, and another state that people notice that doesn't have an individual income tax is Nevada. But the majority of states do. Seven of those states have a flat rate system with rates from a little about 3% up to 6%. 36 states like Wisconsin have a system where the rates rise as your income rises. And this is just uh, an indication of where the tax brackets are, just putting it in a different form than we saw in the previous slide. So um, you can see it start out at 4.4% and eventually to 7.65% in terms of our tax rates. For the property tax, uh, we rank 10th of the 50 states, roughly $2,900 for a typical homeowner second among the Midwest states, and first in our immediate region. Um, the property tax is levied by a variety of local jurisdictions. The biggest share, 45%, is K-12 school districts. After that come um, municipalities, cities, villages, and towns at about 25%, roughly. Uh, counties, about 19%. Technical college districts, about 7% and a variety of smaller districts, uh, smaller specialized districts after that. Um, this just indicates the largest portion goes to school districts and then municipalities and some technical college districts. Property tax took about 4.5% of personal income for the, for the average family this year. Um, there's often questions about exemptions. What kind of property is exempt from for property taxes. So just a little bit of background information there. Um, property taxes are imposed both on real property, that is buildings and land, and also on personal property, that is furniture, furnishings, equipment, and so forth. It's important to note that businesses pay property taxes on much of their personal property. Some business property is exempt from the personal property tax, manufacturing machinery equipment, computer equipment, inventories, and so forth. But a lot of the personal property that's owned by businesses is still subject to the personal property tax. Um, individuals do not pay personal property tax on any of their personal property. If you go back 100 years or more, people did pay property taxes on their furniture and their livestock and so forth, but that hasn't been the case for many, many years. And, um, and it, that sort of uh, illustrates for people who are subject to the property tax who pays, uh, who pays on what type of property. In Wisconsin, we do have a uniformity clause in our Constitution that says everybody whose property is subject to tax pays at the same rate within each jurisdiction. So everybody in the city of Beloit who has taxable property pays at the same rate. There are some limited ex exceptions to that. Uh, the biggest one that people may be familiar with is use value assessment for agricultural property. It's valued according to its use for agricultural purposes, not according to uh, the value that could be, uh, could be sold for it, was sold for other purposes. Um, under the uniformity clause, again, the rate has to be the same for all property, but property can be completely exempt as as its personal property for individuals and property owned by governments, by churches, educational institutions, hospitals, housing organizations, and other charitable organizations. A few comments about the sales tax. It's $822 per capita, the 35th of the 50 states, 11th of the 12 Midwest states, and 4th of the 5 states in our region. Um, again, questions come up about exceptions to the property tax, to the sales tax. Under those statutes, Wisconsin statutes, sales of goods are taxable unless they are specifically exempted. Sales of services are not taxed unless they're specifically identified as being subject to tax. Um, there are a number of sales tax exemptions for goods and also for services that have been identified as being subject to tax. Uh, most of the biggest exemptions are for necessities, things like food, prescription medication, medical services. Uh, another big category is sales to nonprofit organizations and governments. And another major category of exception is for business inputs. So maybe a way to think about this is uh, think about Harley Davidson. When you buy a Harley Davidson motorcycle, you pay sales tax. Harley Davidson, when they 
buy the steel that goes into that motorcycle, there's an exception to the property tax, to the sales tax that says they don't have to pay sales tax on the purchase of that steel. The reason being the sales tax is going to be imposed when the product is finally sold. So those are the among the biggest exemptions. Most of the exemptions we have are provided in the vast majority of other states. 45 states have a sales tax. Our state sales tax rate is 5%, lower than the majority of other states. We have an optional uh, county sales tax at 0.5%, as well as a stadium district tax that affects people in southeast of Wisconsin and Brown County. Uh, but our local option sales taxes are less extensive than they are in the majority of other states. And our maximum state local sales tax rate is 5.6%. That's lower than in the majority of other states. And this chart just shows, compared to our neighboring states, where our state sales tax rate is, where our local option rate is, and what the combined rate is, you can see for state rate, uh, we're the lowest of the five states. For combined rate, we're the lowest of the five states. Finally, just a few words about uh, business taxes, or corporate income tax, uh, 18 out of 50 states, just about the national average, fourth out of the 12 Midwest states, third out of the five states in our region. But one thing that's important to emphasize here is that the corporate income tax is uh, not the only tax people should think of when they're thinking of taxes that are directly imposed on businesses. And sometimes people have that mindset. First of all, uh, corporate income taxes are only imposed on businesses that are organized as traditional subchapter C corporations. There's a lot of smaller businesses that are subchapter S corporations, limited liability corporations, or partnerships where the owners pay tax on business income on their individual income tax returns. So from that point of view, the tax, the income tax that's relevant to the business is the individual income tax, not the corporate income tax. And of course, businesses pay sales taxes, property taxes, unemployment compensation taxes, and so forth. So those taxes all affect businesses as well. So uh, that's just a little bit of information on the things we've been doing to make our tax code more competitive. We do think the tax plan is very, very important for job creation. We want to keep working to improve it. And what we're doing over the course of the next several months is holding forums like this around the state to get direct input from people like you about what the next steps should be. What are the most productive things we can do in the coming years to further improve our tax plan? And with that, I'll end my remarks. And Thank for, you, uh, Mr. Secretary. For leading the discussion that we'll have. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. I want you to know as you think about what you'd like to say, that camera is ours, and so we want you to speak with complete candor. The media will be let in for the last few minutes just so they can get an idea of what went on here and what the structure of the meeting looked like, but we need you to be brutally honest with us because what I need from you, what the governor needs from you is how do we take that and make it better? We need to make Wisconsin even more competitive, and that means different things for each of you. And if there's something that you want to get off your chest, uh, this is the time to do it. And if you have suggestions for us, this is the opportunity, because we need those suggestions. We need to be more competitive. This may or may not color what you're about to say, but from an economic development standpoint, and there are a number of economic development professionals in the room, one of the things that we tend not to get a ton of credit for when it comes to business rankings is our low sales tax. You saw that we're number 35. Uh, when it comes to business rankings for the friendliness of a state towards a job creator, Oftentimes, it's property tax and personal income tax and corporate income tax that gets factored in in a big way, and then sales tax is either uh, low on the totem pole or doesn't get factored in at all. And so we need your ideas on how Wisconsin becomes more competitive to attract job creators here, but also how we keep you and how we nurture your business and your family here. Anyone who wants to start? But I'm actually going to pick. Um, yeah, Kim. I, I'm happy to start. So, as Sandy mentioned, I was in a recent conversation with Mark 
was chairman of Data Dimensions. And uh, Data Dimensions is essentially a computer service company which converts hard copy forms into electronic documents. They work closely with the VA and they're just rapidly growing. Over the next three years, they expect a 50% growth level. So Mark and Data Dimensions recently built a $7 million operation in Clinton, Iowa. And the incentives offered to them in the state of Iowa were 10 times that of Wisconsin's, which is why they landed there. And uh, totals approximated around 2.5 million, including tax abatements, tax sales refunds, job chain, what have you. And uh, they're happy they're there now, but they're continuing to grow. So part of the concern is how are we retaining and recruiting businesses like these outside of agriculture and manufacturing? And, uh, you know, I worry that we could lose businesses by not accommodating these other sectors and putting us in a position to pick winners and losers. And uh, also, we are doing enough to retain the current companies that we have because they are being aggressively recruited. And if we don't acknowledge them, you know, other, other states like Iowa will continue to go after these businesses. So, Another note uh, that Mark pointed out that he thought was interesting is getting to know Iowa. They have a Vision Iowa program. I don't know if you're familiar with it at all. But essentially, it is, it's funded through gaming revenues and other sources. And it was created to assist projects that will provide recreational, cultural, entertainment, and educational attractions. And uh, since 2000, it has funded to the tune of $228 million worth of projects. And he wanted me to throw that out there as a suggestion of something that maybe we could look at for our state. Good comments. Do you want to add to that? Yeah. Um, our new facility in Clinton, Iowa, actually replaced the old facility. So it actually replaced employees. It's not in Iowa. In Iowa. Right, in Iowa. Um, <clears throat> the big thing, the big decision that needs to be made now is where do we go with the next big expansion? And that's when um, Diane and Kim were in our offices talking. Um, one of the possibilities is Beloit and trying to um, secure an already existent property versus build again. Um, but Mark does have hesitations. We're a computer services company. We don't fall in agriculture. We don't fall in, yeah. Um, so that is a big drawback for us. Um, we could go yeah. elsewhere in Wisconsin. We have a location in Murfield. Um, we have a location in Brown Deer. Um, but to be honest, Mark is, um, has his roots in Rock County and would like to keep it here if at all possible. But that is a big issue is the tax tax payment that Iowa produces instead of Wisconsin. Maybe I should just make a couple of points related to that. One thing I didn't touch on here, there are a variety of tax credits available to companies that are expanding and locating through the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, which are really not part of our general tax system, but can be targeted at companies like David mentioned. So we've got the general uh, Manufacturing agriculture tax credit, but there also are targeted tax credits that can be available for companies like that. One thing that we don't have that other companies have, as you mentioned, tax abatement, dropping is for property taxes, and because of the uniformity clause, we can't do those kinds of special targeted property tax reductions that other states can. So we have probably a little less in the way of tools available for property tax abatement. We do have a lot of those tools available of jobs tax credits to WBC. So hopefully those can, uh, can be of interest when you're thinking about where to spend. I just want to, Kim, if you don't mind, on the job retention question, our Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation does have some funds available so that they can retain jobs here in Wisconsin. In this case, what we've learned is that those jobs were in Iowa and they chose to, to stay in Iowa. But if there is a situation where a company is determining uh, whether they want to grow out of state, there is a way for us to step in and try and, and match or be more competitive so that we can retain those jobs. But you wanted to add something. Yeah, I was just going to say in that conversation, there was something you said about the factor that the other states were actually recruiting them. And 
he, they're here and they're not being acknowledged to stay or getting any incentives to stay. And something about that kind of stings, you know, it's like, well, I'm here, I want to stay here, mm -hmm. and I'm getting recruited and making the process very easy to apply for this. So we have a similar situation in Wisconsin. We are recruiting out of state as well. Uh, the governor and I actually just sent out a letter to a variety of companies who when you, you use a, a computer system of matching, we have determined through WEDC that perhaps they might see some potential in growing or relocating here in Wisconsin. And so Wisconsin is playing that game too. Um, we're, we're hopeful that through the income tax reductions and the property tax reductions and some of the special tax incentives that Rick has mentioned that we are competitive for our existing companies. But that's one of the reasons we're here. So we want to know how we can love you more. And so if there is a way for us to do that with existing businesses, we're, we're eager to find out if there are specific ways you guys think that we can acknowledge existing businesses. You know, um, I, I feel like either Corey or Margaret could, could tell us um, maybe a way we can spend some time acknowledging existing businesses. Margaret, you deal mostly with small businesses, right? Yeah, yeah, most of my clients are, are small. And how are they feeling? How, how can we make this better for them? Um, more credits would be helpful for them, I think. Um, I think a lot of the credits that are out there are um, for new activities. Um, maybe if there were credits that um, or more long term and ongoing for existing businesses. Interesting. Show of hands really quick. Which is better? Uh, would more tax credits be better for you, or would you like to see lower rates overall? Because this is a, a big economic development discussion that's being had in governments across the country right now. There's a movement among site selectors to say, you know, we, we're not interested in um, your tax credits. We're interested in rates and we're interested in something long term. But there's a movement among states that says, you know, let's give credits because this is going to spur economic development. So there are two schools of thought. And I'm, I'm wondering if we did show of hands, who, who prefers credits? Okay. And who prefers long-term rate reductions? And I, that's kind of what I was alluding to, is that you know, these credits are usually short-term. Sure. You know, they're for a fixed period of time, um, and they run out after the initial investment, usually, or, or the initial time frame. If it was a long-term rate reduction, then it's certainly more appealing. Even for the small business owners? Absolutely. Okay. Ila, you were going to say something? I think it depends. The answer is a really good question because if you are growing in certain businesses and there are small businesses and there are certain categories of heavy capital investment like high tech area, then I would like to mention because that's my experience from and manufacturing area. You are building an infrastructure for the for keeping the certain, uh, for example, engineering tissues in this class, which will be distributed from the main area to all around the nation. For that, and the infrastructure in the initial the tax is very important. But eventually, this will be a giant business plan. The investors start investing and they are staying here. This could be a 40 million investment, 100 million investment. And that level of a business will look for a tax rate, which is competitive with the rest of the country. So I think if we look into the milestones and per investment or per creation opportunities for the what is the million that they are creating, how many jobs that they are adding in the time frame as they stay in this concept, then that needs to be incentivized in the beginning to grow. Because if you don't incentivize, give incentives, that when they are real small, they are picked up, the, especially the ones that has IP. And they are picked up globally. Mm -hmm. It could be any place on the world, sure. the money will come and they will be very cheap to collect. But if you ingrain that with the incentives and if you uh, build into infrastructure, <coughs> they are big enablers also. And I wanted to also complement Wisconsin because Wisconsin has a tax research credit statement that is not existing in state 
And the research credit is about 45% also using incrementals. It's every time that investment comes and learn incremental. There is an important credit that needs to be nourished. And I notice myself, I feel not if manufacturing credit is also given to the bio manufacturing, that would be important. I don't know if it is given to the bio manufacturing companies, because they are high margin. And not right now. Okay, that, that is, now we don't want to lose off in the future, those companies. Mm -hmm. uh, I hear an example, a rare disease area, which is not a very good thing for families if you have a child with a rare disease. Indeed. You pay $250,000 for a drug therapy for one year. And drug companies are all in the rare disease area, like the cystic fibers foundation. This is a big money. And a company who is enabling or developing a personalized medicine, taking the green sample from you or from your child, or if you have cystic fibrosis, then developing a drug for a 250 or a cancer area, mm -hmm. they're making quite a bit of money for whoever the drug developers are. Mm -hmm. And if all of them happen to be here or they are served by the companies that, that like, for example, we are in that area to help them, we won't need the 250 end result of selling, but we are enabled. We don't get uh, service taxes. I notice that we have sales taxes, but not the service. My question is, that, is it, for example, if I'm a Covance, a large company, and I'm serving the drug companies, I have zero taxes or I will have some taxes. And if I'm a small company, like I'm serving with the sending the tissues, personalized medicine to the pharmaceutical companies for drug discovery. Am I going to be zero taxes in the service because I'm serving them, also I'm sending reagents. So we need to look for the nature and tax accordingly because we may lose uh, lots of money outside or we may not attract at all, which uh, Florida is aggressive, Washington DC is aggressive, in those areas, Texas, is very aggressive, and uh, we would like to at least compete in those in the state wise because I think they will be future of this medicine, manufacturing area, and manufacturing. But it all depends on the structure. Yeah, some. Um and part of it depends on exactly the nature of each business. So I think some of the businesses you're talking about could qualify for the manufacturing credit, depending on you know, if they're manufacturing a particular type of drug, um, they might qualify as manufacturing. If they're providing services, they probably wouldn't qualify for the manufacturing and ag credit. But um, then you have to look at whether the sales tax is imposed. So it does get complicated and it does depend on the facts. I think the one thing I can say is that several of the credits we have, the angel investment credit for new companies that are starting up and then the capital gains exemption for investments in Wisconsin-based businesses, I think both of those are very valuable for companies that are of the nature you're talking about. And again, depends on the individual circumstances, but I think a lot of the companies that you're talking about benefit from those. And from both of those credits, I think we have a more favorable climate than the vast majority of other states for new startup companies and new growth companies. Thanks, Isla. I've go ahead. Got, oh, sorry, go ahead. I've got a comment on the individual side. You know, all business owners, of course, still pay individual income taxes. Uh, and I think we should tout our advantages over Illinois. Now, it's several years ago, in the 60s and 70s, when uh, Illinois started with income tax and so on and so forth, Wisconsin had a much higher rate. And a lot of people were moving from Beloit and the area to the lake district, at least northern Winnebago County, Illinois. Mm -hmm. But we don't tout the idea that we allow itemized deductions. Illinois does not. Illinois does not give any kind of rate on capital gains. For example, this past year, this woman sold her share of her business in the local business at a million dollar profit. Uh, they sold out to a bigger company. It's essentially engineering and that kind of business. Anyway, in Wisconsin, she would have got a break of maybe 30% on the capital gains. In Illinois, no breaks whatsoever. And when you're talking itemized deductions, uh, well, mortgage interest for a lot of people. So these individual owners probably have big mortgages and so on. Uh, now, for years, Illinois has touted the idea that uh, 
our, we don't tax retirement income, whether it's a social security benefit, benefit or pension, or an IRA, or you name it. Illinois does not tax retirement income. Wisconsin is gradually getting towards that area, but they aren't there yet because essentially they do still tax pensions. There, if you have really low income in Wisconsin, you're much better off in Wisconsin than Illinois. There's homestead credit, home batch, everything, and an individual pension credit in Wisconsin for low income. But we ought to tell our advantages that now that uh, Illinois has a 5% income tax rate, not 3%, that is a major factor. I used to do uh, analyses every other year on comparing Wisconsin to Illinois at family of four and that kind of stuff. Individuals, not business. But again, business owners still pay individual taxes. Anyway, for years, between 60,000 and 80,000 of income it was sort of a push. If you had 60,000 or lower income, Wisconsin were much better off. And Illinois, if you had 80,000, you were pretty much better off. But now that they've got a 5% tax rate, I don't know. I haven't done it for the 5% tax rate, but I, I used to do that all the time. And for years, I was on the radio here in Deloitte for over 28 years answering tax questions and the taxes. And I got all sorts of questions. So, again, don't just talk business taxes, talk how they affect individuals. For example, this uh, capital gains business, if you have a Wisconsin business and any gain on it is exempt. Now, that is a major feature to a small business and their owners and S corporations are the thing. Now, I personally am an LLC, but anyway, uh, it's a major factor. The owner of these businesses and the key executives probably are Wisconsin residents, but there for a while, all these high income people were living in Winnebago County and working in Beloit. Interesting, Dick. We're going to go here and then we're going to go here. Oh, me? Yeah. I'm sorry. Just a couple of comments um, with regards to what other states are doing from a courting standpoint. Uh, from, got, I'm sorry, what standpoint? From, from what they're doing to court us down. Courting standpoint, okay. Uh, obviously, I was an issue, but where I'm seeing a lot of activity is in the southern states. Mm -hmm. A lot of my clients have operations in Mexico, and now they're talking about pulling them back to the states. Uh, all all Wisconsin-based companies, uh, and there's been three different <laughs> clients in three actually different states, in two out of the three states, they were they were flown around in a helicopter. I mean, just luxurious <coughs> stuff, and it, uh, it, it in giving them several million dollars worth of tax incentives. I'm not sure how aggressive Wisconsin's being going the other way, trying to recruit companies in, but it, it's pretty uh, mind-boggling and, and eye-opening as far as what some of these states are actually doing uh, to to get our our businesses uh, to leave. We've had one one client that ended up going to Mississippi. Uh, they took about 100 jobs uh, away from Wisconsin to Mississippi, and there was about five point, about roughly five and a half million dollars worth of taxes associated with that. Uh, it, it was a manufacturing uh, company that this that, that, that this happened to. So from that standpoint, it, it is happening. It's very they're very aggressive. Uh, with regards to the, some of the policy, uh, although I agree with Scott and what he said earlier about dealing with the Department of Revenue is much easier than most states. However, uh, I do a lot with the research credit within our firm, and I, I've been in several situations where we've been audited by the IRS, or a client's been audited by the IRS, there's been a no change audit on that credit. Wisconsin audits it, this allows 100% of it. And this particular credit, it couples the federal rules, so it should be the same as far as determining what types of costs qualify and don't qualify. So I think from just an administration standpoint, a lot of my clients at least shy away from taking these credits because they're, for lack of a better word, afraid or they're, they're, they don't want to have to deal with the department when they come in and, and audit this. So with, with this credit or the other credits, if there's more of a bright line test that the department could put in. To, to reassure some of the taxpayers, especially the business taxpayers out there, or even individuals, because if you're an S Corp, it's going to flow through, uh, just to give them some more reassurance that we're not going to come in and just disallow it, and then the, all the burden is truly on you, especially when you've got, for example, the IRS that just came in and allowed 100% of it. So. Interesting. Thank you. Larry? Um, I just wanted to add to what this gentleman said. I think it's important that. Uh, we do tout it and do tout the benefits of Wisconsin, but I think the way to do it is to have a tax system that's very simple and very understandable. I think if you're starting to throw around a lot of credits, uh, debits, which may be given to you, but 
not be given to you depending upon what kind of business it is that makes it more complicated. If you have a, if you have a low tax or have a flat tax, it makes it very easy for um, other people to understand. So I heard low tax and flat tax. Yeah. So a very well, we small to-do list for you. Well, I agree. Mm -hmm. states are very close to us. No, I agree. have adopted or have um, flat state income taxes versus the progressive system that we have. Indeed. Go ahead, Scott. Uh, I'm going to ask Wisconsin to take a chance with new companies. Credits that are limited to a taxpayer's taxable income or tax liability. Why do you do that? You get a company that comes into Wisconsin, they bring in jobs, they make investments, and you offer them some credit that's limited to either their income or their tax liability. Now, in lot, now there's probably budgetary things here that are just way beyond my pay grade, but that company's coming to Wisconsin, they are hiring people, which is increasing the tax base, they're making investments, which is increasing the tax base via sales tax and maybe personal property tax, and then you tell them, you didn't make any money, you can't claim any credit that year. That's the, I understand you're probably going to say the, the credit carries forward. It's not good enough. That company needs that credit that year. And this is going to require Wisconsin to take a chance on the people that they're asking to come into the state. No question. Indeed, indeed. Um, you all probably uh, read the headlines about the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation and assuring accountability there. And one of the things that our administration feels very passionately about is assuring that taxpayers um, have the type of accountability they expect out of government entities. And so I misspoke a little bit. When I said take a chance on taxpayer, I mean, I understand that Wisconsin and said can't give away credits without some payback. That company that loses money, there is the chance, this is where you got to take a gamble, that they may never make money and may never generate an income tax. But they also might, you get them through the hard times by giving them a refundable credit. Maybe that company turns around and turns into an ABC supply and you get hundreds of millions of dollars. Thanks, Scott. Just, just to follow up on that point, there's a bill circulating in the legislature right now that's looking for co-sponsors that addresses one area of the portability of these tax credits, and certainly the Secretary and staff have been extremely helpful on this. So the current bill right now essentially is going to allow a transfer of those tax credits, but the other two prongs of uh, this approach would uh, increase the refundability aspect as well as perhaps venturing on a pathway for some type of sale mechanism. A lot of legislative and financial issues associated with this. Uh, so consequently, the first approach is to go after the transferability. Long term though, the big goal is to work on some sort of sale mechanism and or complete refundability. And certainly again, the secretary and staff have been wonderful at crunching numbers, but unfortunately because of some of the remarks that the lieutenant governor has made regards to WEDC and the taxpayer accountability, it's a tough sell right now with the capital. So it's an incremental approach. Uh, it's a way to create more street value for these two tax credits to make them more affordable, more uh, attractive for small and emerging companies that may not have sufficient tax liability to use them, but yet certainly do have the investments and the job creation associated with it. But on that point, I don't think Wisconsin should settle to do one or the other. We need to do both. I know the Secretary's heard me make this statement before. It's not only just lowering the overall aggregate tax liability in all those respective areas, but you also have to have those other benefits, those other tools walking down the same pathway. You can't do one and just forget the others because our competition isn't just our adjacent borders. It's all the other states, more importantly. It's the foreign direct investment that we're dealing with. So we need to make sure that we're doing both of those moving along, albeit at whatever pace we can, chipping away at those obligations and chipping away at, at reducing that competitive gap that separates the top from where we're at right now. Indeed. Shannon, you mentioned that you have kids. Jeff, you mentioned you have kids, both uh, business people, but we've spoken a lot about business. Um, interested in the perspective of uh, a business person, also as a parent. Um, I look at, well, my kids are older, so they're going to college, I look at the credits they do for taxes as, as far as having kids in school, that's minimal. It's about 25 um, But 
and I have another one that's going into to school. Of course, I have a small business, and financial aid is not something that makes sense for me. Uh, grants are hard to come by. Um, so as far as getting help for something like that, um, that would be great if there were a way to come up with more grants or more credits for having kids in school because the others don't allow me necessarily. Interesting. Thank you. Jeff? Um, I have two young little kids, two and three, so daycare most of the day. So I mean, crunch of that would be awesome. Uh, but yeah, they've reached child care reduction, so a little bit of progress. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you know, the big thing I see is property tax. You know, we're number 10 in the nation for property tax. And that seems to be the thing for, on our end, is for our membership, is the, the burden on, on them. And the suggestion uh, would be that if we are so low in sales tax, what kind of money could be generated from that to maybe bumping that up maybe 1%? It would still be well under all the other states, even our surrounding states, uh, and then taking that into some sort of property tax relief with that. Uh, you know, I know the governor has already flattened uh, property tax, but we're still 10. And I know we're not number three anymore, but working in the right direction, but could that spur something? Um, so that, that's a suggestion that I would throw on um, Interesting. Scott, you're going to say The Department of Revenue permits Wisconsin residents a lot of tax money. And the Department of Revenue will provide that taxpayer with the tax liability of any corporation or individual in the state. Um, I will admit I don't know if other states do that, but I suggest they don't. I think they do. Uh, without getting into our personal situation, I will just tell you that that form is being used by others primarily for sanitized purposes. And I, it, I find it extraordinary that the Department of Revenue would divulge my personal tax liability and not deem that to be confidential to any Wisconsin resident who wants it. That, what's the rationale behind that? I'm not attacking it, but there, there's usually something behind, behind it. What's the reason for divulging that data? Um, it's it's provided for in a state statute that we have to do that. Right. We have to uh, provide information about the taxes paid by somebody. We don't provide any other information about no, no. income deductions. But, but what's the rationale behind the statute? I think um, you know proponents of open government right. at one point just got that passed, saying uh, they want that information and. That was probably passed by people a lot smarter than me, but I will just tell you as a citizen and also a victim, um, that form is being primarily for sanitized. And, and some some other states do. Uh, some do and some don't. I think, yeah, I think most don't. Right? Yeah, probably the majority don't. But uh, but yeah, it's just some people think that it's been state law for that, at least 30 or 40 years, but it's part of the open government. Seems up some rash now. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Kathy, how would small business owners respond, do you think, to the question of how do we make this better? The folks I, who place ads with you. Well, this is going to sound kind of simplistic, especially given the perspective I have. But I've been in marketing and advertising for a long time. One thing that has always been a problem for small businesses is how they advertise their business. It's important. Um, there's about five million ways you can advertise your business, but it all costs. And for a small business to grow, to be able to hire more people, to be able to buy more inventory, it all hinges on the customer walking in the door and purchasing the product. I think everybody I talk to when it comes to small businesses, they want they want to bring those people in the door. And they're always looking for ways that will maximize. You know, for some small businesses, a couple hundred dollars a month is a hit for them, depending on what they're selling. And we're talking the the individual owners of a business. And you know, it's a lot. And that's advertising one place maybe one time and then we know that just doesn't work so i think anything that businesses do 
as far as marketing or advertising, maybe there could be some incentives for that for small business. Maybe they can get a credit. Um, maybe a, a percentage. I don't know how that would work in the, logistically, but anything anything that they do to promote their business, signage, um, uh, websites. I mean, print at this point is still pointing people to their websites, but you know that it would be helpful to them. They want to do it. They just don't have the funds to do it, and that prevents them from growing. And they're wonderful. Small business owners are absolutely wonderful. Hardest working people. I mean, they put everything on the line. They risk everything. Um, you know, they they get tossed about. They're like little boats. And they just get tossed about and and everything affects them immediately. That's true. The small business owners have a very high value rate, which is unfortunate. Right, yeah, they don't have the reserves of big companies. They're the nearest in the coal mine, but they are also the largest job creators in this country. Absolutely. Exactly. Jim, we've done a lot over the last couple of years for veterans, but is there is there something with that hat on, no pun intended, um, you could you could offer in the way of advice to us, or is, or is there something else that is well, on your mind? I uh, have the honor of having been a, a, a past officer of the American League in the Department of Wisconsin, which is state headquarters. Uh, and I'm very much aware of what Governor Walker has done to reinstate a lot of policies uh, that were effective years ago and somehow got tossed by the wayside or the, 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 the sunset clause went down on them or whatever. And, uh, an example would be the, uh, the break for uh, veterans to uh, attend uh, advanced education in the state. Uh, we now can, if you were Discharge from the state of Wisconsin, which is something the governor has changed too, which I'm glad to see because I was not. Uh, you're now eligible for education benefits in the state of any state college or uh, most uh, technical colleges or whatever. And that's regardless of your age, even the governor like me decided to go back and. Uh, continue my education if I could. But thinking of something that affects us immediately is probably back to go back to property taxes. Uh, this year I'm happy to say that my property taxes went down $62. Or I've been told that $62. We don't know that for a fact because the bill hasn't arrived. But uh, that's what the anticipation is. And the other thing that would affect a lot of veterans are your peripheral taxes, the ones you don't see, or you don't think you don't see, and you don't think they're a tax, but they are a tax. Uh, when you mentioned fees earlier, fees are taxes. If the government is taking money from you, it's a tax. I don't know what else you want to call it. But uh, one of those little things that kind of always stuck in my call was uh, the vanity license plate program for veterans. We identified and have the honor of being identified as a veteran, I have to pay $15 a year more. Should I have to? I don't think so. I think I should be able to $15 a year rate. That's not a lot of money. But, uh, to the veteran, it's another thank you, or a real thank you, that uh, they haven't gotten it before. Uh, that's just a couple of my thoughts. Uh, since I'm retired, I don't have to plan budgets. You guys are hitting home with me. So, uh, just uh, the bells and wheels are turning, and I'm, I'm thinking, oh, why do I sympathize with these folks? I know what they're going through, and I know what, you know, I know what you're saying. Just good to be retired. <laughs> <laughs>
Do you want to offer anything that Jim can sympathize with? I, I would say two things. One is, and I recognize that the political reality is different, but businesses love certainty. And to the extent that the governor can put out a projection as to what his intentions are to evolve for tax rates or for tax credits or any of this stuff, uh, it would be great. I understand that none of it is cast in stone, and I understand that the legislature has a lot to do with what comes out of it at the other end. But nevertheless, uh, you know, if someone said to me, in Wisconsin in the next five years, the tax rates are going to go down every year. We don't know by how much, but they're going to go down every year. That would help a lot in the planning. Uh, the other thing is more just a comment, and, and that is, uh, I know Kim and Larry and a couple others are, are it's very uh, near to us relative to workforce development. And we really appreciate the money that's in the budget and would encourage you to continue that because I think that one of the factors that's going to make this area as well as the whole state stronger is developing the workforce and helping the people who are not fully employed at the present time to get that way. So that helps your tax rate tremendously when you have more taxpayers. This is true. Thank you. Mr. Black? Well, I'm going to touch on something that no one's really talking about. I'm not going to be the genius about The taxes and the fees go to run the state government. I don't hear anything about really true government reform. You read about waste every day, hiring people that really don't do anything. N nothing's really substantiated, though. And there's never any studies about, you know, we're, we're going to redesign the way we employ people. We're not going to have different departments tripping over each other in the setting. If a business can move to Beloit because the has got to be involved, this department's got to be involved. I mean, I do know that the Department of Tourism runs very well. Yes. <laughs> For those of you who are unaware. <laughs> and they bring in billions His of dollars to the sky. secretary. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it's, it's interesting that we're feeding government both statewide and nationally, and you read about the waste, and it looks like it just goes in one ear and out the other, and then we're the ones who are talking about a tax credit or a lower rate. Well, every every tax incentive we give, someone else pays something for that. Someone mentioned about winners and losers here earlier. I'm not a big proponent, but we have to keep giving incentives. Someone's paying for that because the government's not giving up anything. And whenever we talk about, you look at the government shutdown, whether it be locally or nationally, what are they gonna take away? Well, the stuff's that hurts. We're not gonna forget your garbage, we're not gonna plow your streets, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we're gonna keep everything else going. So it, it always comes back to us that we have to make that decision, or we're, we have to live the decision that government makes for us. And of course, everybody that runs for office is gonna change it, but once they get up to Madison, their full-time benefits and working twice a month. There's no incentive in it. So we keep we keep chasing these dollars, but we don't do anything about it because unless the government works for less, takes less, we have to fund it somehow. And everything else is just a game. Fees. So when is that reform going to start to take place? And who's going to be the one that does that? <laughs> And I don't care if it's Governor Walker or Governor Doyle. You always see about people being hired and giving jobs for eighty thousand, eighty thousand dollars a year, and then you find out what person wasn't qualified anyway. So I'm sure I got off on a tangent, for everybody. But <laughs> that's the one thing we never really seem to talk about. I mean, we saw where it's Shannon got your kid. I put three kids to college. I'm still paying for them. I went to state universities, and you see, there's a billion dollar slush fund that's been hidden from the taxpayer, and a year later they want to increase the fees again. Well. He's <laughs> who, who control? I mean, so how does how do we actually ever have a chance to impact that? By saying what you just said. Well, you said it, but what's going to actually? Who's going to do it? Because if you're sitting in that office in the Capitol, what's the incentive to actually change that mindset? It's a hard decision to make. It really is, because I'm not saying the people that are in these different departments or these aren't good people. But something has to be done where we're not doing redundancy and we're, we're penalizing people out here with audits and, and things like that. So I think I got the intention. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Just you asked. I'm embarrassed asked. I'm going to tell you what I, you know. No, I, I want those two cents, um, right? Because we're from government. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding. Oh, we didn't get a chance to talk to you. Uh, I live in Illinois. I've worked the majority of my career. That's all right. He's wearing a Bears <laughs> I'm a Bears fan. I'm a Bears fan. I was going to wear my Bears sweatshirt, and then I found out I had to come here this morning. Uh, anyway, I, I obviously, you know, through the media, we've all experienced a lot of the, the, the waste and corruption that uh, Illinois finds itself in. And in many ways, I think people in Wisconsin see themselves heading in the same direction uh, to a degree. Uh, so I, I'm kind of you know, following on his remarks. Uh, how do you, where is the accountability? Um, Where's the money going, and how can change be affected? Well, I think change is affected by you all being in this room today. That's why these meetings is really paramount to changing Wisconsin's tax climate in general, um, and a very important first step in addressing what, what we think is an issue. We need to be more competitive. Um, and we're, we're hearing with consistency, now we've got two in a row, saying we need to not just address the, the tax climate, you know, how we take in revenue, but we also need to address what gets done with that revenue once it gets into government. Scott? Something, something he said earlier, attracting business to this council. It's not enough to offer an incentive, you know, available to anybody, right? Write a new statute, come up with regs, and throw it on the books. We at ABC, the invest, you need to, I think, put an equal investment in seeking out the new companies, calling their CFO or their tax director directly and getting them interested. You will get, in my opinion, 50% of your new businesses in Wisconsin that way. And the other 50% being just having this opportunity available. But it's not enough to just have the, the, the statute out there and say, we'll give you a 20% tax credit uh, if you move to Wisconsin. It's not enough. And it's not that hard to, call, to get somebody to call up the CFO of X company and say, hey, here you got this going on. Uh, you don't need to bring a helicopter, but you know, have a one-on-one -on -one with the guy. That's good, because we don't have one <laughs> helicopter. But I will tell you this. Um, I mentioned that the governor and I are sending out these letters to companies that have been identified through WEDC as companies that could have potential for growing in Wisconsin. And there are going to be personal follow-up calls made. I know this because I will be the one making them. Don't be a good payback. Uh, well, you know, we've, we've seen that despite the fact that we live in the social media day and age, Personal relationship building is really irreplaceable. And it's interesting you bring up CFOs because often it is the CFO who will be the one making a lot of the decisions if it is a relocation in particular. You're a CFO sitting in Iowa. You don't know much about taxes. You don't want to. You've got a tax record for that. Okay? And you're thinking or you're involved in the decision to move a business. All right, I, the CFO, do not have the time to look at the tax laws in Wisconsin, da, 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 da. Or maybe I won't take the time. But you get somebody from Wisconsin like you, and you pick up the phone and you talk to that CFO and say, we're considering offering you $250,000. You have just made it easy for that CFO to consider it strong. Maybe not do it, but consider it. The thought... I think before we go out and attract all these businesses, we, we haven't addressed this issue yet, but we've got a labor shortage in our skilled trade. And I don't know if there's any, if we can cut some waste and offer some, some incentive uh, for companies to go into the high schools, for those students that aren't going to go to the four-year schools. Uh, I'm a product, I was part of the problem because of my kids, I push four-year school. But there's nothing wrong with going and getting your trades. And, and I've got a lot of clients that are paying very good money right now for welders and, and, and just hard laborers that 
with the baby boom getting a little bit older, we've got a real issue here in Wisconsin and everywhere, really, but in Wisconsin, especially if we're, you know, we're, we're uh, such a huge manufacturing state or this touting that we are. So. By me commenting on this opens about a half hour worth of me talking. You don't want that. Um, but it's but a real issue. It, it is a real issue, and that's why we're investing so much in it. We have uh, about a dozen programs I can tell you about right now addressing this very issue. It's that important to this governor. He is really committed to bridging the skills gap, and that's why the one investment in worker training and education and a number of our transitional jobs program, a number of really great tools in order to address exactly that. Sherry, we didn't hear Well, I would just add to that because of the, my involvement with WIDIC. I mean, I think the piece that we see there primarily that's frightening is that we'll go to all that trouble of training those folks and then they're being recruited by their states and they're leaving here. So we're not even keeping them once we've done this training. And so it's a very scary prospect. Interesting thought. Yeah. I think it's a very good point for our children because the science, education, technology, math is a program that is absolutely important in Wisconsin. If we want to keep our children here and then also make them educated here, because I think our children, we can get their college credit. I and mean, I have two children. I would like to send them college credit because I want them to find a job here. And then technology based jobs or manufacturing ones actually we can retrain the people who are jobless here and starting from high school because they don't really have to wait and do other things. And if our high schools are more in the math and science, we don't need to export people from outside of the United States to bring to the Wisconsin for IT jobs. But right now we must do that because if we don't, the jobs that cannot recruit people here because it is very hard to find a very highly qualified skill set and for the hard work. And the ones very little here, they are here, they want to stay, and very high education in Wisconsin, they are very lucky actually to access to the high PhD that I have never seen in any other states. Wisconsin has them. Mm -hmm. And those people are sometimes jobless and we need to retrain them to focus on the jobs available bring the businesses to those because I think it's a big potential for this person. And that's my belief, but our children need to be ready for that next future jobs. You're completely right and I'm gonna do one thing, what, what I said I was not going to do, delve into that worker training policy just because we've had two comments on it right now. But when you talk about high school students graduating, kids who are ready for the jobs that actually exist in Wisconsin, we are <coughs> devoting a lot of resources. And while it's not a tax incentive per se, it is an incentive that goes right back to the school of $1,000 per pupil for a student that graduates with a technical equivalency. So one of the kids that you were just talking about, someone who has technical training who can be either retrained or can have training on top of what they have, the equivalency degree, and then go directly to work for you. We're making sure that our schools understand that for every one of those students they graduate, that's another $1,000 per pupil that school gets. We imagine that we will start to see these schools that become centers of excellence for STEM learning. And that is exciting because that is one, advanced manufacturing is one of our identified growth areas over the next 10 years. And there are seven of them and that's exciting. We are definitely doing something about it. Larry, you want to say something? Well, um, just a perfect comment today. Today it, it's at 3 o'clock, 3.30. It's 4 o'clock. Well, okay, I'll have to, work today, uh, which is a, a job force development program, something we've discussed in the past there. Uh, we've got a committee together. Yes, development of education and re-education is so actually being a <coughs> retrained PhD doing it in the field there. I appreciate that. Um, yes, this is something that's really big and it's happening here in this in this area. This is one of the great advances in the development of the program in the last couple of years. There, there's a lot of work in this direction, and I thank you very much for that. Um, on a totally different end, the one comment that has not been made in reference to health care uh, and expenditures. Uh, and as we talk about reducing tax basis there, you know, 
uh, keeping that here strong is very important. Uh, I just have to make that point. So, two, two totally unrelated to that. Is there, is there? And our governor completely agrees with you, and we are strengthening magic care by being the only state now that will have no gap in coverage when it comes to the poor support, which is really what healthcare reform was ever designed to do, right? Make sure that everyone has good access to good care. And Wisconsin, once again, manages to be alone at the top when it comes to, to taking care of her people. It's really it's really something special and something that we're pretty proud of. Thanks. Mom, can you say something? Well, I think the sales tax is one way to spread tax across not only the residents, but visitors that you met, so others are playing into it. I don't, being in Wisconsin, know is there some kind of um, entertainment tax that the state puts on, additionally on tickets or entertainment? Some municipalities do that, but that might be something to look at. I'm not going like this right now. But I'm saying, you need, and I don't know what our hotel to hotel motel tax is on our hotels compared to other municipalities or regions that are the same. So there might be opportunities to look in the entertainment field of things on the state road. And that may already exist, I think. Let's take you, huh? Illinois. They're bankrupt, but they fund their tours in the Bankrupt, but they have fun doing it, right? <laughs> there you go. Here's a comment, though, on the uh, fees and so on. Uh, fee is a tax, I wholeheartedly agree. When I was in the Army in, in way back when in California in basic training, a uh, vehicle license annual was about 348 bucks. The equivalent in Wisconsin was $16. Now it's $85. And uh, there's a lot of money. We're coming up short on our gas tax revenue because we have an increase in gas tax and people are getting better mileage in their Wait, cars. Wait, let me understand. $348? Yeah, that was in 1952. In California. To register a new car, car in California. Yeah, at the time. In 1952. Yeah, well, sure, it was based on property tax. It was still oh, okay. to register. See, in certain states, you can deduct on your personal income tax return personal property tax, and a good share of that is your auto license fee because it's based on value and not just a flat, a flat tax. <laughs> there. But anyway, and those states have a much higher vehicle license tax than Wisconsin does. So again, we ought to tout what we're doing well. <clears throat> Maybe we ought to, to pay for our transportation and our I-90-39 interchanges and uh, upgrading and all that. One way to do it is that, but then again, I'm proposing, if you want to put it that way, an increase in taxes, which is I kind of that something like that. <laughs> 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 you know, it would be nice, though. It's a nice fact sheet, I guess. Tax and marketing don't go well together. But in doing our relocation package, yeah, we can really get those facts quick to put in. We do. Oh, great. We do. And um, we can get that to you. Thank so you. Um, if we can, Robert, if you can get Monica's information so she can get that sheet uh, that we use for WEC, that would be. Is there anyone who has not said anything? Yes. Um, I guess as we're talking about incentives, uh, maybe the existing ones need to be revised a little bit. Um, my boss, Mike, had asked me to discuss right now, if we do more than 5% business with any of our sister companies, we'll lose the tax incentive offered by the federal motor carrier. Uh, so that's something that is kind of old on the books. Um, with that, somebody mentioned grants a little bit earlier. Uh, the state used to offer grants for APU technology, which is kind of old by today's standards. Uh, but as we get into the CNG and LNG technology, maybe those grants could be applied to, to something like that. Uh, that would definitely benefit uh, a small trucking company like us in the way. So just something I thought about. No, that's a... A good point because transportation logistics has been one of those identified growth industries for us over the next decade. It's one of the top seven that we were talking about earlier. And so we thought to provide an that would be very helpful to us. Anyone else? Yes? Hi. <laughs> uh, a lot of this has already been said. It's just more statements you've heard of, right? Like, you know, carry, obviously, Beloit based. Uh, they deal a lot with, you know, we bring in new people all the time in our RD and admin support. Um, you know, they're always choosing between Illinois and Wisconsin. So I don't know if our HR group 
gives them any kind of fact sheet, but typically they go to Illinois. Because, you know, this is cheaper property tax, cheaper income tax. So, you know, it seems to be the way that it goes. Um, on the credit side, you know, we have a lot of interaction with the WDC on various sites that we have in Wisconsin. And, you know, again, so just focusing on the you know, companies outside, you know, you know I, I'd like to hear more from our reps, you know, coming to me more often. You know, it's usually me having to go to them, saying, hey, I'm looking at a project. Uh, but I think it would be good to keep that relationship going all the time, and not just when something comes up. Because, uh, you know, like everyone else pointed out, people are coming to us without us even calling them. Say, so we know you got a plan here, and they're, they're being more proactive. And, and again, our real focus to the business unit, you know, when I uh, have to analyze you know, state X in Wisconsin as an example, they're going to focus on bottom line taxes, property tax, sales tax, payroll tax, income tax that's not refundable, you know, not a refundable structure they could care less about. It doesn't impact their bottom line. So that's a hard sell when it's those type of credits. Uh, so we focus on grants, uh, refundable credits or uh, abatements, you know, loans, uh, forgivable loans, those carry a lot more weight to the BUs. For those of you working in economic development and even uh, business owners who have opportunities to talk to other business owners, not just in Wisconsin, but in your dealings uh, on the state line, uh, we want you to use our new In Wisconsin website that was developed by the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. It's relatively, and so if you are not aware of it, it is a good tool and it is a good resource to help people find the information they need regarding taxes, regarding incentives, regarding credits, and even sites. And if there are sites that, that you need to make us aware of, that's the way to do it. So that's just inwisconsin.com really easy to use and if you can help people by guiding them there and um, perhaps we need to put some tax information um, for comparison purposes up there, it's a good tool. Are there any final comments? Anyone want to throw something out that we have not discussed yet? Well, as uh, typical, yeah, Dick. I'll get you right. <laughs> <laughs> An antiquated capital individual capital loss carryover system. Wisconsin allows $500 capital loss carryover, Trevor allows $3. Now, I propose that Wisconsin do more or less federal like, like they're doing in Section 179 depreciation stuff, that they increase that capital loss carryover allowable by $500 each year so that in six years they get up to the federal. Level. But that had not changed to about 1960, give or take a little. Whenever Wisconsin restarted this, uh, about sales tax and income tax, uh, Wisconsin had an income tax longer than 63. But anyway, they haven't changed it since the 60s, this $500 capital loss carry. And it's just a pain in the neck. People die before they use it up. <laughs> I've seen it several times. Well, hopefully not soon. <laughs> Dick, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here today. Secretary Chandler, do you have any parting thoughts? Uh, not really. I just appreciate all the uh, information. It really helps to get uh, you know this put in context with what you're seeing out there. So thanks. We're sorry that we've taken about 10 minutes more than we said we were going to take. We know that you are all very busy people, and we know that your commitment to moving Wisconsin forward is tremendous, and that's why you're here. So thank you for offering us your advice and your thoughts. We are very eager to have more of these forums throughout the state of Wisconsin so that we can take all of the information that we are compiling and get together so we can make some good, smart, big decisions regarding tax reform in Wisconsin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.